Hello guys, Lefer here. Um, today we're gonna take a look on the new patch notes for the PTS, uh, Horns of the Reach. Um, I already read them, uh, but I want to go over again. I, I just had a quick look, um, so it will be like new to me. Um, I didn't think over them, you know. Um, we're gonna give some thoughts on them, like um, what can be done, some um, small tower crafting stuff. Um, anyways, so we have the new dungeons, two new dungeons, Blood, Bloodroot Forge and Falkrit Hold. Um, they said it's not as hard as the uh, Shadow of the Hist, but more like uh, mechanic based, so that that should be very fun. I'm hoping. Um, so we have a new skin, a hat, titles, and housing stuff. So, anyways, these are not so important. We are here to check the good stuff. Okay, new item sets. There are eight new item sets. Whatever. Okay, these ones are dropping from Falkrit Hold. Uh, the Light Set, Drogur's Rest, Maximum Magicka, Magicka Recovery, and Healing Down. So this is a healer set. Um, let's see. When you deal damage with a fully charged heavy attack, you create a circle of uh, consecrated ground that heals you and your allies within 5 meters for 11k health over 10 seconds. This effect can occur every 10 seconds. Okay, so 5 meters is a really, really small area. And heavy attacking, like, this always works like this. Healers do not use sets that increase their healing. They use sets that increases other people's damage. So if you want to use a set that does healing, you better use it in PvP. But the problem is, this shit is really small. And you have to charge a heavy attack. Uh, that's that's kind of a problem. To be honest, I don't like the set at all. Um, like, only thing I'm seeing this is... Like, you, you won't need it, but just small terror crafting. You are a mine uh, camping magicka sorcerer. In PvP, and you use a heavy attack while sitting on the mines, and does it uh, create the circle on you or on your enemy? That's if if it creates it on you, that's fucking awesome, because you are protected by your mines and you're getting healing inside the shit. If it's, uh, it's I I really don't like the set. I don't think it's good at all. Okay, Pillar of Nern, maximum, maximum stamina, weapon critical, weapon damage, Th those are very nice bonuses. When you deal damage you have 10% chance to create a uh, something underneath the enemy after 1 second. Um, dealing 2000 physical damage to all enemies within 2.5 meters, so that's very small, and causing them to bleed for an additional 8,000 physical damage over 10 seconds. This effect can occur once every 10 seconds. Okay, we're gonna get back to the set once we go to the um, uh, once we check the other set, other medium set, more correctly. Um, so this says. Uh, you, th this is obviously a PVE set. It's like it works like Narianet. It it pops out of the ground, and you have one second to get out of it. So it it's not gonna work very well in a PVP situation. So it has a ten second cooldown as well. Um, it says when you deal damage, so you don't have to. You can use it on a damage over time build. It doesn't. It it really doesn't matter. It's a good set because 
it is bleed. Um, the thing is, some of you might not know this. Bleed doesn't give a shit about damage shields or resistances. Bleed just goes through. Uh, so that's actually pretty good. Uh, even if you have lower penetration, this set will do maximum damage. I mean the second uh, effect. Uh, that's pretty nice actually, not bad. Okay, Iron Blood. This is the set we saw uh, before. What? Why did I do that? Okay. Max health, physical resistance, spell resistance. When you take damage, you have 8% chance to turn your blood into pure iron and gear m gain major protection for 10 seconds, reducing your damage taken by 30%, but your movement speed is reduced by 75. Okay. Um, and this effect can occur every once every 15 seconds so you have a 5 second downtime um, ok so let's just take a look at this it says uh, major protection this is this is a very selfish set uh, so I don't think this is a set for PvE tanks this is more of a PvP thingy um, And the the thing I'm um, curious about is uh, there were already comments uh, on the forums about it. Can you cleanse the movement speed reduction? Is it only one buff that uh, that is in the major protection, or can you cleanse it? We need to go to PTS and test it, but. Uh, Templates don't have shit. They will get these items much later, like I think the next patch. So we won't be able to test these items, or I'm not gonna farm it, obviously. Anyways, so this is more of a PvP set. Uh, if the movement speed reduction can be cleansed, I think this set would work best on a Templar uh, because the cleansing is much cheaper on a Templar. Um, actually, Warden can work as well uh, because the Magicomorph of the Netch uh, purifies uh, one negative effect from you. Uh, so, those are the options you have. This is obviously not a PvE tank set. That's just obvious. Um, the monster set, Domi House, maximum stamina, maximum Magicka uh, on one piece. So when you deal damage, you have 15% chance to create, create either a ring of fire or a ring of molten earth around you for 10 seconds. Uh, so it follows you, right? It should follow you. I, I guess it works like growth there. So it says, which deals 1000 flame damage or 1000 physical damage every one second. Standing within the ring Oh, okay. It you need to stand inside it, so it 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 creates the ring around you, and it stays there. Standing within the ring grants you two hundred spell damage or two hundred weapon damage. This effect can occur once every fifteen seconds. This is pretty cool, cool. But the thing I'm wondering about is, it says when you when you deal damage, you create either a ring of fire or a ring of molten earth. So it says or, but it doesn't say depends on what. For example, the Elambris procs from the the fire proc, procs from the fire damage, and the shock procs from the shock damage. Uh, so, for example, if you use this on a stamina DK, when you deal damage with the flames of oblivion or the standard, it will proc the flame damage, and the, it will give you the spell damage bonus, which will be shit. So you can't use this on a stamina DK. This is obviously a very good set, uh, like 200 weapon damage or spell damage. This is very cool, actually. Um, but I don't know. Um, it's pretty nice, but it's obviously a stack and burn fight kind of uh, monster set, you know? Uh, because it has 15 second cooldown like it will create the thing and you need to stand inside 
it will not be very suitable uh, for those fights you need to move a lot, you know. Second boss Vimol, first boss Vimol in that case, doesn't matter much. Um, you know what I mean? And it also depends on how big the circle is. Uh, like, is it big enough to for me to run around or is it like the shittiest thing in the world? I, I guess we just have to see when uh, templates get the sets. Okay, so these items drop from the other dungeon. Flame Blossom, Light, Maximum Magicka, Spell Damage, Spell Penetration. I, I'm really wondering how much penetration you get from that. It doesn't say. I really want to know. When you deal damage, you have 10% chance to summon a line of flame that moves forward, dealing 8000 flame damage to any enemy in its path. This effect can occur once every 10 seconds. So this is the, um, th this is the thing that um, maybe some of you remember. Um, uh, what was that? Black Art Heaven. There's a bitch. Uh, with feathers and shit, uh, it's a uh, uh, like she throws something at you from the ground, like a little flame, and it does shit ton of damage. Uh, this is the same thing, I'm guessing. Um, that is a lot of damage right there, and it doesn't depend. Okay, this is the good thing here. Uh, Scoria has five seconds cooldown, right? Uh, why am I comparing this to Scoria? This is 5 piece set. Uh, well, to be honest, it looks nice, but it, it can't do critical damage. So, it's kind of... I don't know, it depends on how much you can... Um, like, you can 5 piece it on your back bar, for example. The, because the 4 piece bonuses are pretty good. Like Max Magicka spell them spell penetration, that's actually pretty good. Like when you go to your back bar, if you have the weapon, it can do a shit ton of damage, dude. That's pretty good actually. And if you have a rotation that requires you to go to your back bar every 10 seconds, that would be pretty nice. I guess we just have to see. Um, okay, Blood Drinker medium set. Weapon critical, weapon damage, weapon critical, those are the, I think, best bonuses for a stamina DD. Weapon crit, weapon, weapon damage, weapon crit, at least in the more event patch. Those bonuses are fucking amazing. Um, increase the damage you deal with, bleed damage over time effects by 20%. Okay, as I said, this thing deals bleed damage, so you can boost it with this. So you can make a bleed build on it. So you have the uh, twin blunt and bleed, uh, twin blunt or something. I I don't remember the dual wield passive, right? So you can make a dual wield bleed build. You have the blood craze, uh, not blood craze, rending slashes, and you have the you have this set, this thing here. So you have three things to boost three um, bleed effects and it, it's not a low number 20% is fucking huge um, you can even make a pvp build out of this like you have the dual build on your front bar with double axis and two hander x on your back bar so you and you use the blood craze on your front bar that that would be a lot of bleed damage. You have the axis, you have the other set bleed, that's two, you have the two-hander bleed, and you have the blood craze that there are four bleed damages you can boost with this set. That's fucking amazing. You can make a pretty nice build out of it. It would be in medium armor and it would be shit in sustain or um, tankiness, but still that's a lot of damage right there. And just from bleed, it doesn't 
as I said, Bleed doesn't care about resistances or shields. It, it just fucks everything up. So that's pretty nice. Um, Hagraven's Garden. Um, it says, Max health, health recovery and healing taken. That's already pretty much shit for me. Um, when you take damage under 50% health, you summon a preservation of nature around you for 5 seconds. Okay. Uh, any damage you take from enemies outside of the preservation is reduced by 50%. And the first enemy... The, uh, and the first time an enemy tries to enter the pre preservation, they are knocked back to 5 meters. What the fuck is wrong with this? This effect can occur every once every 45 seconds. What is that cooldown? Seriously. For 5 seconds you get 50% damage reduction, that's cool. Not bad. 45 seconds cooldown? Just get the shit out of my face, dude. Just get it out. The, the, this set is so shit. That, that cooldown doesn't work. That just won't happen. Um, another monster set. Earth Gore. Healing done. A healer monster set. Nice. Uh, when you heal a friend the target that is under 50% health, you conjure a pool of quenching blood underneath them uh, which soaks up enemy placed effects instantly what the fuck that's a AOE purge it's like negate that's pretty good actually and heals all friendly targets in the area for 30k health over 3 seconds dude oh my fucking god so does it does it negate the death royalty or any kind of AOE? I must say this is pretty fucking OP. This is a negate that you can drop every 35 seconds. Is it how it is working? Enemy place enemy place effects instantly soaks them up Th this is what I understand is this is negate it is probably smaller but it heals for shit ton and it is a burst heal like, even though it is over 3 seconds that is a fucking burst heal it will full your fucking health up in no time you won't die and it procs every 35 seconds. This is fucking amazing, dude. If this thing can negate AOEs in trials, oh my fucking god, dude. This is amazing. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, th this is the only set I'm interested in right now. Uh, I, I want to see if it negates stuff. New die, I don't care. New Battleground game mode. Uh, some of you might know, I'm pretty into Battlegrounds now, and we, we even have a group that's pretty nice. Uh, we're not losing much uh, matches. We're uh, actually doing pretty good, so Battlegrounds interest me, so I'm gonna read this. Um, this mode introduces a single ball in the game, and your team earns points by holding the ball. You can carry the ball around and use your abilities freely, and there are no other requirements for scoring other than holding on to it as long as you can. Okay, so you just have to hold the thing. Holding the ball comes at a cost, as the Chaos Ball has a stacking healing and shield debuff. Fuck. Okay, so you have to make a very solid tank build as well as pulsing oblivion damage to all allies in the area what the fuck dude including the ball carrier so you can't carry this as a magicka templar because it will fuck your healing you can't carry this as a magicka sorcerer you need to be a very tanky motherfucker that who happens to have a pretty good healer. 
and there are no sigils of power in this game mode. Okay, th that's that's very nice. The game ends when a team has scored 500 points or the match hits the 15 minute mark. That's really interesting. Um, I'm guessing the Oblivion damage is increasing over time, so that would be very, very fucking awesome. I want, I, I want to play that. Um, let's see, new battleground map, Arcane University. Uh, all game modes, including the Chaos Ball, are active. You don't need to own the Imperial City game pack, but you need to own ESO Morrowind, obviously. Um, yeah, okay, doesn't matter. Um, let's see. You earn a medal for each tick of scoring while holding the Chaos Ball and can earn additional medals for holding the ball for 90 seconds. So you can hold it for 90 seconds. That's possible. It means it's possible. Uh, the time-based medals are awarded when the ball is dropped or the match ends. Okay. Healing medals have been adjusted. Uh, okay. Three new motifs. Talwani, Redoran, and Hulalu. Stealing. You steal them from people. What the fuck? And you can get them from Thief's Throws. Okay, that's pretty good, actually. I can't do that. I, I, I don't bother stealing in this game because it's so boring. But th this is a reason to steal. And all of them drop from stealing. So that's pretty good. Um, okay, let's see. Guilds. Whatever. I don't care. Crafting. Um, equipped items can now be improved. Okay, that's nice. Um, okay. Okay, this is pretty nice. Okay, this is something I like. Um, okay, so people die, right, from damage over time effects. And they say, I got 50k damage from this. You, no, you didn't take 50k damage, dumb motherfucker. This is the thing, we need it. Damage over time abilities will now display the numbers of hits, number of hits you received from that ability next to that ability icon in the death recap UI. That's pretty good. You could see it in uh, combat metrics, obviously, but this is very nice. You don't have time to open combat metrics uh, during the fight, right? So this is pretty good. So when you die, you can open your death recap and see how much damage you took from that stupid shit. Uh, for how long you stand in that red area. Okay, that's that's pretty good. Um, okay, this is this was needed for a lot of time. You can now deposit alliance points and retrochers into your account bank where they may be withdrawn by any of your characters. That's pretty good. Um, a character receiving alliance points in this fashion will not increase your alliance rank or progress in your alliance or skill lanes, obviously. Um, okay. When you report a player, you also ignore them automatically. That's nice. Um, so the... The watcher guy is selling new items, okay. Champion point increase, uh, each of them has a 10 point increase. That's nice. Uh, small buff to everyone. Okay, templates, th th this really saddens me. Um, you start from the initial alliance zone. You have way shrines in dungeons, you can teleport, which is nice. Uh, but here's the thing. The new item sets are not yet added to the templates. We want to encourage you to find them and also utilize and test utilizing existing item sets. Okay. Um, as a, when I go there to test something, I need to 
get those items because I don't care about utilizing the old sets. I need to see if there's a bug in the new sets. Okay, I know it will come like here in the next PTS patch, but more time we have more bugs will be found. Um, anyways, creating a high level template character no longer floods our inbox. Thank you so much. We couldn't mail each other for fuck's sake. That's that's pretty nice change. Thank you. Um, okay, we cannot visit the new houses yet. Uh, but in next patch we will be able to. Okay, that's nice. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, combat and gameplay. Warden balance changes. Cutting dive. This morph can now be cast while you are silenced. Yeah, obviously this is a stamina morph. And this is a stamina morph too. Okay. Green balance. Budding seeds. Um... This morph cannot be cast even if you have an enemy targeted in your reticle. Okay, so this is a bug fix. You can't, you couldn't heal people if you have an enemy between you and your target. Okay, nature's gift. Uh, I was wondering about this, if it has a cooldown or not. Uh, so obviously this has a cooldown. I guess I'm guessing one second. I have no idea. We'll see. I guess. Winter's Embrace. I, I didn't play Warden yet. I didn't even create one, so... I I'm just guessing it's one second. Uh, Crystallized Shield. Updated this ability and its morphs tooltips to indicate the maximum damage they can absorb from a single projectile. Okay, everyone thought it could absorb anything, like literally anything, but it obviously doesn't. Um, so... We now have a tooltip with numbers and shit to know how much damage they absorb. That's pretty good. Okay, healing seed. Grammatical error. No one cares. Okay. Okay, no one cares about that. Um, did you fix the drop chance of this? That's the important thing. Okay, for those who don't know, Boyant Armager motif drops only from House of Fabrication. I don't know if I missed it. I hope I missed it. Because this thing doesn't drop. It doesn't drop. Um, okay. Let's see. Trials. Flip text. No one cares. Uh, more treasure chest or standardized? What does it mean? More or less? Okay. Uh, I hope more. I need some weapons from there. Okay, let's see. Housing. Justice. Um, okay, so, okay, some of them will just stop speaking to you, in Wardenfell at least, if you are, if you have a bounty, and some of them will, I'm guessing this means attack, Sometimes just jump at you, I guess. Yeah, obviously, so. slaves are now easier to steal from. You monster, nice. Nobles are slightly more difficult to steal from. Steal from. Uh, does it make sense? I don't know. Many mages in the zone. Okay. I guess not so important. Quest and zones, I really don't care. UI, um, I don't care. Nope. 
Nope. Oh, here's some changes. Reduce the amount of monsters the overfiend calls for assistance. Uh, yeah, it was so fucking annoying. All of them are mages and when you chain them, they just run back even if I tall on them. That's fucking bullshit. Okay, so that's nice. Thank you. Reduce the health of Lord Warden's... Lord Warden does clones. Okay. Nerf. It was the easiest phase in the whole fight, so I don't know why you made a change to that. Um... Two players can now receive the Mod Priest vision instead of just one throughout the encounter. So Mod Priest vision... Okay, okay, this is uh, again another nerf. So instead of one person only closing the targets, uh, closing the portals, I'm sorry, now two person can. So this is more of a white gold tower nerf. And look at this. Are you fucking kidding me? Plain mild drifts are now easier to target. You are basically babysitting people and portals now have less health in veteran mode. But why are you even... Okay, I might be triggering some uh, casual player base, but white gold tower, like, closing the portals are, like, really, really easy. As a tank, you can just light attack and poison injection and it, it is one shot. You don't even have to do that. If you have decent DPS, you can just burn the boss. I don't know why for newbies... Anyways. Um, the Talar Jewelry Luck Box merchants now sell rings and necklaces directly with no box. So... I don't know who buys Black Rose or... The other set, what's that? Powerful Assault. I don't know who buys it now. They're pretty much useless. Yeah, not bad, I guess. Okay, art and animation. Blah, blah. Blah, blah. Okay, weapons and armor from Briarheart, Mark of Praia, and Trinimax sets will now drop in the full set of normal traits. That's nice because there are no sharpened weapons of the Briarheart. That's fucking annoying. Now it they will be. So this doesn't include Nirnhorn, obviously. Uh, but uh, <laughs> you'll see why it doesn't matter anymore because sharpened is pretty much fucked. You'll see why. Um, fix the issue where some restoration stuff of the prayer. Okay, it doesn't matter. Um, let's see. Dungeons and group content. Reduce the damage from Dranos' Orb of Spite and Wrath of Mephala abilities. Dranos' Orb of Spite is the thing uh, that the statue in the middle throws at you, right? So that reduces the damage now. So it doesn't one shot you anymore because it was supposedly so fucking hard to dodge. Bullshit. Rot of my fala, I don't know what that is. Okay, with it. Uh increase the cast time of corpulence. What 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 is corpulence? Is that the heavy attack? Or goat of bile? Um, I'm guessing the corpulence is the heavy attack and the good of bile is when she eats you and drains your ultimate. Uh, good of bile now plays a visual effect on the tar player character whether it is targeting. Okay, so this is the eating part. Decreased how much stamina and magicka is drained by this is support. Okay, so this is a pretty much nerf. Everything is nerfed. Why are you doing this? Marrow Fiends no longer cast Searing Bond. Okay, Searing Bond is a thing you need to get away from each other and break the bond or you take damage more and more. So that's you completely removed a mechanic. Okay, Shadow Spine, that's the thing that goes into your ass 
uh, if you don't dodge it. Now, it does less damage in normal and veteran, but in hard mode, it does the same damage, so you still get it up your ass if you don't dodge it. That's nice, I like it. If you want the... Uh, if you want to dodge, <laughs> you still need to dodge, okay, bravo. We... okay, that completely evens out all the nerfs. Ruins of Mazatun, <laughs> fucking bullshit. Slight Slinger, okay, the, I call them crazy motherfuckers, they just enrage and attack shit around. Um, no longer, no longer clear any taunt debuffs after completing their Feral Blitz ability. Yeah, Feral Blitz is the going crazy bullshit. So I'm guessing when they enrage, they don't give a fuck about taunts. So now I'm guessing they do now. Yeah. Zanlor the Slaver. Increase the cast time of Brutal Bellow. Who is Zanlor the Slaver? Uh, dude, I can't even remember. Ah, oh, this is the Argonian dude. Okay, uh, it's the it's the same boss with the seventh stage on Maestrom. Increase the cast time of Brutal Bellow. What what's that? I don't know. Increase the visual intensity of Swamp Spice while it's on the ground, so you can see it clearly, because it doesn't have a very obvious animation. Like, he's, he targets the ground in front of him, and fucking does the spitting animation for two years. So it wasn't obvious enough, so you had to increase intensity. Zandor will no longer become immune to taunt while casting Monstrous Blitz. He will still charge his selected target, but will respect an active taunt debuff once it, once the charge completes. Okay, uh, you had to taunt it every time after the charge is complete. So that, uh, yeah. Uh, will now cast monstrous blitz less often. Uh, so less charges now. The, why why are you nerfing this too much? They were fun. Fuck this! I don't like it. Okay. Um, I don't care. I don't care. Combat and gameplay. Here we go. This is the important stuff. Adjusted elemental status effects such as burning or concussion. So these are dealing damage, by the way, for those who don't know. So they now scale with your max magicka or max stamina in addition to your spell damage or weapon damage so their damage is buffed so burning and concussion deals more damage um, their damage has also been adjusted due to this new scaling and should remain relatively unchanged okay their damage is not increased then with an exception to burning which now deals double the damage before okay that's a reason to go back to burning spell weave instead of sun because burning spell weave applies the burning status effect immediately like it doesn't have a chance it just applies it um, burning now lasts four seconds and ticks every two seconds previously lasting three seconds and ticking every 1.5 seconds the total damage ticks remain unchanged so this says burning does twice the damage and this says the total damage is not changed. No, 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 the, the ticks doesn't change. So there's still an increase in the burning damage. That's nice, actually. Poison now deals its total damage over 6 seconds down from 12 seconds. Um, so it's more of a burst now. Yeah, should be. Okay, concussion and shield secondary effects. Minor vulnerability and minor maim now last 4 seconds, down from 6 and 5, respectively. So, concussion is nerfed. Uh, magical sorcerers were buff bitches, anyways. So, they, they use, like, they're just there for the minor vulnerability. No one really cares about magical sorcerers now. They fucking suck, dude. 
but this thing nerfs them even more. So, but you still need to get the minor vulnerability. So, you need more sorcerers now? It's kind of fucked up. Uh, I'm trying to understand. It, it is a duration debuff. So, it will fuck everyone's uh, thing. So, we, we're gonna need more shock damage in the group to keep this up with more uptime. Okay, not bad. I, no one cares about shield. Fuck it. Um, summon pets from abilities and item sets now move 10% faster. Yeah, they're still stupid, so especially the beer. Um, dodge rolling now grants immunity to immobilizations when it's used while you are silenced. Okay, it was already granting immunity to immobilizations. But I, I'm guessing the silence itself, for example, in the gate, were preventing you to put the uh, immunity buff on yourself. So I'm guessing this now fixes that. Um, okay, here we go. Dragon Knight, Ardent Flame. This combustion, this passive ability, now increases the damage of burning and poisoned by 50%, down from 66 so uh, as here says burning does twice more damage but the dk passive is reduced okay dark talons this ability and the choking talons morph now deal magic damage instead of physical damage and no one cares i guess so uh, but the magic damage is kind of important because some dks uh in pvp might want to use the might want to get the minor main so they might want to choose choking talons uh, but it was scaling with physical damage now it scales with magic damage so they get the benefit from uh, whatever you know what i mean uh, from cpo or some shit um, obsidian shard stone fist increase the radius of the heal from this morph to 20 what the fuck is wrong with my mouse okay Move to 28 meters from 10 meters. It still sucks. Why, why, why is this even a thing? You're gonna spam this uh, from range and accept some heals now? But what's the deal now? You have a range healing? What's the deal? I don't know. Fuck it. Disable 10 it's more now. Use your highest critical strike rating to determine the critical strike chance. So, okay. What was it getting scaled from? Uh, what? Fuck this dude. Um, werewolf. Updated several animations used in certain werewolf abilities to improve the response time when weaving them with other abilities. Okay, uh, I, I can't remember which patch, but werewolves are fucked in the past because of the animation cancelling uh, thingies changes to animation cancelling uh, Werewolf were actually a nice DPS may, may, definitely not now but I hope they fix it now maybe they can be useful again I'm, I'm hoping they had pretty good bursts like really good bursts there's no way to sustain it now but it's still pretty good Fire rune, this ability and its morphs are now hidden to enemy player characters. What the fuck? It's it's actually annoying because if you put this, for example, someone is getting the keep sieged, right? And they break the gate, the, the small gate, for example. And you can stack fire runes right in front of the gate and whoever runs in fucking explodes and don't even have a chance to survive so what is that okay whatever doesn't matter buffs and debuffs Major and minor defile. This debuff 
now also decreases enemy's health recovery in addition to their uh, in addition to decreasing their healing received. This introduces more counterplay against health recovery builds. Yeah, Trolk is Trolking is fucking OP. Uh yeah, yeah. I like this change. There's a direct nerf to trolking, which is carrying people pretty much. Uh, okay, Mundo Stones. Mundo Stone values are bonuses have been retuned with a focus on improving overall diversity. Almost all Mundo Stones were buffed, with the exception of the Thief, which was slightly nerfed due to the overshadowing all other choices. That's completely true. The lady was upgraded to grant both spell and physical resistance, and the lower was completely redesigned to grant spell and physical penetration. What the fuck? There's a penetration mundus now? That's nice. Um, how much though? Okay, it says here. Uh, we also standardized Mundo stones values against other systems that grant similar bonuses, such as enchantments or item sets, so you can customize the stats you care about in each system without needing to worry about weighting the exact values against each other. Okay, that that's pretty nice actually. Okay. The Apprentice now increases spell damage to 238. It was 167 now. Uh, the Atronach same. So this is a sustain buff. Uh, I don't think anyone will use Apprentice. Um, okay, the Lady now grants spell resistance in addition to physical resistance. Value increased to 2.7k from 1.9. That's actually pretty good. Three um, K resistance, just like that. It, it, it's, er, like, uh, whoever read the damage mitigation thread in the forums knows that resistance is shit. It's not very valuable for PVE tanks. Uh, so this is obviously not a thing. The lower now grants two point seven. Physical and spell penetration instead of granting spell resistance. 2.7. This is one sharpened weapon. Actually, more. Um, I want to do something. Just give me a second. You have 7 divine, right? So, divines give you what? 7%? 7.5? Let's say seven um, times one forty nine. So with with seven divine items, this thing gives you a bit more than four K penetration. Just one Mundus giving four K penetration. That's eight percent damage increase. So, 1k penetration is like 2% damage increase. I'm talking about PvE. So, this Mundus gives you 8% with full Divine. And that's fucking amazing. Okay, that that's actually pretty nice. Uh, I think we just gotta see. Uh, the Lord increased max health to 2.2 from 1.4. That's a buff for me, thank you. Increased max magicka to 2k from 1.3. Uh, that's a buff to pet sorcerers in PvP. Fuck you. The serpent increased stamina recovery. Okay, that's nice. The same thing with Atronach. Makes sense. Reduces reduced critical strike chance to 9% from 11%. Um, Okay, we said 49, right? So, um, 
it's with with seven divine you have 13.4 percent now before you had like 18 so that's that two percent is was it 18 no it's not 18 it was 16 or 17 something so it's it's north as fuck so i don't think thief is the best now it's still pretty good like 13 percent um critical is fucking insane it's still pretty good um okay the tower increased max stamina to 2k okay warrior the same thing as apprentice the shadow and the ritual remains unchanged okay so here's the thing i'm seeing twice born is back so this is really obvious i i think the the lower is very very good like it's fucking insane dude seven divine armor that means 4k penetration that's fucking insane and if you combine it with so you either combine it with shadow or thief one of them i i can't see a dps build using twice born that that's that's pretty good i really like it i really like the change they did to lover i really like it that's pretty nice um Okay, combat fixes improvements. In an effort to reduce the visual effect noise in co group combat situations, we have hidden most visual effects from persistent damaging air effects cast by our allies. Thank you. This was fucking my FPS up. Are your effect abilities that have a synergy, healing, or defensive component that can benefit you will still be visible? Thank you. Such as shards, right? Um... And area of effect abilities cast by enemies will also still be visible. Okay, that's pretty good. Like, th th this shit, this is fucking my FPS up. I don't want to see no fucking uh, death royalties. Drop it and get the fuck out. Don't fuck my FPS. This is pretty good. I like it. Um, hurricane, volatile, familiar, fucking pets, dude. Just... Um, impaling shards okay this is pretty good pet of darkness i'm not sure i'm gonna close it because this thing looks so fucking cool dude i like the animation of this skill so much okay affected item abilities bahra curse essence thief growth dart thank you oh my fucking god dude elambris thank you so much so i closed all of this shit right and uh, on the second boss in hof i don't want to I, i'm not gonna see any more uh shitty death royalties now and i can see which one is the real one they can drop everything they want fucking elambris fucking all my shit up grotter the enemy of uh red array of effects fucking bullshit Narianet, fucking useless chain coming out of ground i i really like these changes that's nice developer comments having less visual effects yeah thank you this is a very needed change i never thought of it or seen anyone in forums suggesting it but thank you whoever thought of this really Summoned fed pets will no longer, no longer despawn and respawn when attempting to follow you. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. It really doesn't matter. Okay, so when you send your pets to attack someone you immediately start combat now this does it doesn't when your pet pet reaches the enemy and actually attack then the combat starts that's nice i like it uh, uh what what does this mean 
creature's name. Okay, I, I, I don't even know what that is, but... Um, slightly less than 300 uh, at target 1% health. How did you even test this? How do you drop someone to 1% health? Fucking crazy shit, dude. Okay, these are bug fixes, right? Okay, dampen magic. Bullshit, bullshit. Uh, fixed an issue. Lightning staff have attacks were not commanding your pets to attack the target. Thank you. This is this is so fucking annoying. Thank you. That's a very nice change or fix, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Okay. Okay. No one cares. Okay, weapon traits. Similar to how Manda stones were changed, weapon trait builders have also been re rebalanced with a focus on improving overall diversity. Almost all weapon traits were buffed, with the exception of sharpen and defending, which were nerfed due to them overperforming, obviously. Well, defending was shit, but yeah. It was good in PvP, though. They should still remain one of the strongest options for increasing our damage or survivability. But now, now the power difference between them and the other traits is no longer so massive. That's true, actually. Prosperous was completely redesigned to grant a new combat function and will be an interesting choice for builds seeking to maximize resource recovery gains. Pairing the Divine Strait with a Recovery Mundus will grant more recovery for that particular stat, but Prosperous will grant more recovery overall. Oh, okay. That means... Okay, th this is, this is kind of nice. Okay, so if you use a Tornak Mundus with Divine Armor, if you use Prosperous, it is better because, like, you see, as I said, 50% increase, right? Uh, what's this now? Uh, fucking something. Uh, 238. So it should bring it to something, I don't know. So it basically means if you use Prosperous, you'll get more recovery than using it with Divine, with a recovery mundus system. No, no, I completely misunderstood. If you use Divine with, for example, Atronach, you get more magical recovery. But if you want some uh, magical recovery and stamina recovery and health recovery on the side, like with a little bit of Sacrifice from magic recovery, Prosperous will be a better choice. That means that. So, instead of using Divine, use Prosperous. You uh, lessen your magic or stamina recovery or health recovery. But you gain more recovery from your other stats. That's actually pretty good, not bad. Like, I, I, I know some PvP players are using... One Piece Blood Spawn on their PvP build, uh, on their Magicka build, I'm sorry. Like, this thing can solve it. Th this is actually a pretty good change. Uh, I like it, yeah. Okay, adjusted values and bonuses of most weapon traits in the following ways, with the listed values being for two handed gold quality items. Okay, decisive increase the chance to generate one additional ultimate to 40% from 34 okay that's not bad a uh, small increase but still something defending um, reduce the reduce the spell and physical resistance granted to 2752 from 5160 so it's fucked basically so if you use a one-handed defending it gives you even less now like one point 
1.3k resistance. No one will use defending now. It's completely shit. Infused. Increase the bonus value granted to the applied enchantment to 30% from 20. And increase the cooldown reduction to the applied enchant. Oh my fucking god, dude. Are you serious right now? Torux Pact is back on tanks. Fucking amazing. This is so fucking amazing. I love this change. Okay. I'm sorry, I got excited at it. Um, fuck, dude, that's pretty good. I want it. Okay. Good thing I still have my Torx packed, so. Uh, Nunhorned. Increase the bonus to the weapon's damage by to 15% from 11. So 4% weapon damage on the weapon. So what does it make? It was 1, 3, 3, 5, right? So if you use it on your main hand, it will give you better things. 10% of it, 130, 1, 140, 150 something. That's pretty good actually. Not bad. You get some nice weapon damage if you use it on your main hand. Not bad. Uh, let's see. Powered. Increase the bonus to healing then to 9% from 7. Uh, that's... I I don't... I don't think powered as a PvE weapon. So this is a PvP buff for healers. So that's that's pretty good. Like the damage is increased obviously. Because the Mundus stones and shit. So I, I, I guess the, the increase to healing makes sense. It's only 2% so why not. Uh, and even 1% on a single one-handed weapon. Okay, let's see. Precise. Increase the critical strike chance granted to 9% from 7. Um, okay. We all know infused is best in slot for stamina DPS, right? Uh, at least on main hand. So infused will stay as best in slot. It's even better now. So I'm guessing precise on off bar. Uh, I mean off hand weapon. I guess that would be better now. Okay, let's see. Sharpened, reduce the spell and physical penetration granted to 2.7 from 5160. Okay, this is fucked as well. Like, no one gonna use sharpened. Charged, intricate, ornate, and training remains unchanged. Charge is pretty good for healers and some tanks who are using lightning stuff back bar. That's pretty good, actually. Uh, charged should stay. It's good. Um, okay, the Prosperous Armor Trait have been re redesigned to give it a combat function. It now grants 11. What? Is it just 11? Okay. 11 health, magic and stamina recovery as a gold quality item instead of just gold gain. Uh, so the gold gain is fucked. So you get 77 recovery if you use full prosperous. 77 You must be fucking killing me. This is this is so low uh, It's it's not good at all uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I it's It's very underwhelming only 77 full for full legendary set No Reduce the damage on the damage health weapon enchantment by six percent yeah th this everyone is using this so i guess that's something nice but six percent is uh, not so good like it, it's it is it still does shit ton of damage uh, for what it does i mean it, it's not a lot of damage but it goes through everything it ignores everything so 
Weapon enchantments will now proc if the initial attack is dodged. I will no longer proc. Okay, that's nice. So when you dodge it, they don't hit. Okay. Proc set changes and monster mask balance. Okay, I'm sorry, I just need to... This is the thing I'm waiting for. Item sets have received two major rebalancing efforts this update with a focus on introducing more counterplay to certain item set procs and impro improving diversity in monster mask choices. To introduce more counterplay to certain item set procs, we have changed the method in which they deal damage. While we are happy with the current damage values on these item sets, having them deliver that damage in unavoidable bursts has led, an, led to an unsatisfying PvP experience. Um, you should have said this long time ago. The procs of these item sets now have unique mechanics to delay their damage, along with accompanying visual effects to allow more time to react to them. So it's, they are still pretty good against fucking stupid people. That's what it means. You just need to get good. Uh, to go hand in hand with the release of two new monster mask item sets, we have rebalanced most of the older monster masks to ensure that every monster mask conforms to similar damage healing and survivability. Okay. So, there's a change here. Adjusted the values of 1, 2, 3 and 4 piece bonus stats for all item sets. Okay, the first thing that, can't, that got my attention is this. And look at this number. This is a Krag nerf. This is a nerf to Krag. So... Uh, I called it bullshit. So Craig wasn't even... So this thing only and only affects Craig. And that one set, that new set that gives path penetration on the fourth bonus. That's the only thing. Okay, Craig is far from best in slot in PvE DPS. We all know it. Velizet or Celine does much much better. Why are you even nerfing it? It's something I don't understand. Personally, I use Craig because I don't have Velvet or Celine. Okay, whatever. Max health, Magicka or Stamina has been increased by 13%. That's pretty nice. Weapon critical, spell critical rating has been increased by 55. Okay, uh, so this is what I see. People gonna use the twice spawn they're gonna be using infused or precise items they're gonna be using the penetration mundos with the shadow one and use the precise weapons uh, for magicka i mean this is what i see so they still have the crit from sets or whatever um and they will still have the same critical, but they'll have penetration and crit damage on top. No, not crit damage. What, what, what did I say? Shadow with lower? Yeah. So you do m much more crit damage now while having the same critical. That's pretty good, actually. I, that would be very nice. Th that's my... And that's the uh, first thing I will test as a DD. Twice born, lower mundos, shadow mundos, infused main hand, precise off hand, and precise bow on back bar. Or near horn bow, one of them. I'm not sure, we're gonna see. This is, this is very good, I really like it. Um... Physical or spell resistance has been increased by 13%. No one gives a shit about resistance. And this is Krag nerf and the new monster set. Oh, okay. 
uh, not new monster set, the, the, the other new 5 piece set. Any monster summoned by an item set proc now inherits any bonuses you have. The most notable bonuses are damage done and healing done from passive abilities. Major minor buffs. So this is a uh, this is a pet buff. So if you have minor berserk from combat prayer, your pet does eight percent more damage. That's pretty good actually. I like it. I, I don't like pets. I hate pets actually. But this is a nice change. Um, okay, let's see. Blood spawn. Decrease the amount of ultimate generated by this item sets procs to 14 ultimate from 15. So fucking much change. It doesn't even proc. What? 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 Why? Why is this even here? What? What's the deal? You should buff this set. Well, why are you nerfing it? it it's so fucking shit, dude. It, in PvP, it procs almost on cooldown. I know. In PvE, it doesn't proc. It doesn't do shit. I did fights where blood spawn didn't proc once. That's fucking bullshit, and you nerf it. I I have no words. Seriously, fucking bullshit. Like this 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 doesn't even um uh, considered as a nerf. No one gives a shit about one ultimate every fucking two hours. Like wh what does this change even mean? Fuck off. That's bullshit. That's wind. This item set now grants crowd control immunity to the enemy after knocking them back. Grotter. Decrease the damage of this item set proc by 10%. Okay, that's that's nice actually. Elambris, decrease the damage of Okay, Elambris is nerfed as well. Fucking sorks are fucking fucked, dude. Oh my god. Lord Warden, increase the radius of this item sets to 8 meters, okay. Narinet, increase the damage of 20%? What the fuck? This is so good, dude. 20% increase? Okay, this thing procs from the direct damage, right? And the, and the Twisted Pet counts as a direct damage. Uh, Pretty much every light attack counts as a direct damage. This thing will proc fucking on cooldown. And it's got a 20% buff. Fucking insane, dude. It has a... Okay, probably the reason it got a buff is it has a max health bonus on the first piece. I really like it. This is fucking insane. This is amazing, actually. Okay, Night Flame. This is the shitty healing set. Uh, increase the proc chance from this item set to 5% from 3. Oh my god, thank you. And change the one piece bonus to max magic instead of max health. Uh, that's not bad, actually. Not bad. N no one, no one still gonna use it, but not bad. Poisonous Serpent. Increase the proc chance of this item set to 50% from 25 but decreases the damage to 3.4 poison damage from 6.8 poison damage. So that means if you use a heavy attack with a dual wield, it will proc, like with guaranteed proc, because your heavy attack does damage two times. Like, it should proc. Uh, Anyways, whatever. Celine, this item sets proc now displays a hostile telegraph to enemy players, indicating the array of effect. Okay, that's pretty good actually. So we can um, get out of it, right? That's nice. Um, Celestrix, increase the damage of this item sets proc by 30%. I don't even know what. Is, is that the set that stuns with a fist? That's it, right? The Some kind of fist thingy comes out of the ground and stuns the fucker. Okay, yeah, that's the set, yeah. 
yeah, it, it, it's it its damage was pretty low. Now it's better, I guess. Increase the cooldown to five point five seconds. Okay. Shadow Rant changes this, changes this item sets proc to a cure when you take damage instead of when you deal damage. Okay, that's pretty m nice because this is a defensive set because it applies minor main on your enemy. So if you want to play defensive, if you want to get defensive bonuses, you should be taking damage. Increase the proc chance of this item set to 15%. Okay, that's nice. I like it. The monster summoned by this item sets proc now deals magic damage instead of physical damage. That's very nice because what we see here Where's that? Where, where did I read that thing about the pets? Okay, any monster summoned. So your buffs will increase the damage of your pet. So I'm seeing magical sorcerers using this set. Increase the duration of minor maim to 10 seconds from 5 seconds. This is a very good Magical Sorcerer set right now, I can see it. This is fucking amazing, dude. This is amazing. Shadow Rant, Necropotence, it will proc on cooldown. No problem. 15% proc chance. Fucking will proc immediately. That's amazing. Um... Okay, Shadow Rant meta for Magical Sorcerer PvP. And you can't even kill this pet. Fucking god, dude. This is amazing. Okay. Shadow of the Red Mountain. This item sets proc now. Spawns a volcano that erupts after one second and launches a projectile at the closest enemy. Projectile, so you can reflect it. Fucking shit, dude. So, uh, okay, here's a question. When you reflect it, does it go to the player that is using Red Mountain? Or does it just hit the volcano and... I don't know. Like, is that volcano... Can you destroy it before it erupts? And what, what kind of shit is that? You, you spawn a, a small ass... Volcano, probably. I, I mean, you can't spawn a fucking huge volcano. So, what kind of shit is that? So, you can reflect it. You can dodge it. You can block it. You can do everything now. This is pretty good. Uh, shield Breaker. This item sets proc now only occurs once... For each cast of lightning or restoration stuff heavy attack. Fucking my mouse. Shit. Okay, thank you. This is a nice change. Uh, Slime Crow. Change it the one piece bonus to a double one piece bonus of both weapon and spell critical chance instead of health recovery. That is amazing. I like it. This set was already very strong in PvP. For those classes who don't have access to Minor Berserk, uh, except every class except Night Blaze. So, this is a very nice buff. I really like it. But the critical chance, not so much. But if, if it was weapon damage, I think that would be OP. So, uh, I guess that's something. So, crit, crit is still shitty in PvP. So, but it also buffs your... Yeah, I guess that's something, yeah. Should be nice. Um, let's see. Spawn on Mephala. Increase the damage of this item set's proc by 5% and just change the One Piece bonus to maximum stamina. Oh my fucking god. This is amazing. Okay, here's the thing. Uh, this thing deals poison damage, right? So, poison or disease? I don't remember. I I remember it is 
it as poison damage, so I'm just gonna go with it. Stam DK has a poison damage AoE passive, six percent if I'm not mistaken. So spawn on Mephola can be really, really fucking good on a Stam DK. It got a small damage buff, but the one piece bonus increasing max stamina. That's fucking amazing. I really like it. That's that's really nice. Okay, Storm Fist. Increase the shock damage of this item set's proc by 10%. The physical damage portion remains unchanged. Okay, so this is a stamina set, right? And the shock damage doesn't scale very well with whatever you have. So... Uh, this doesn't change much. Swarm Mother, decrease the cooldown of this item sets proc to 1 second from 2 seconds. Okay, so non DK tanks. Yay. Uh, what is that? This item sets proc now occurs after a 1 second delay and displays a warning visual on the set wearer when the proc occurs. So it gives you a 1 second of warning. If you don't block me, I'm gonna fuck you up. It means that. So that's a nice thing. That's pretty nice actually. Okay, Viper's thing. This item sets proc now deals its damage over 4 seconds instead of dealing it instantly. Okay, so it, it now scales with Tarmaturge. Can we use it in PvE? Is it good? We need to test. Because it will scale with Tarmaturge now, which does. Ah, but it doesn't scale with Master at Arms now. Okay, I, I guess it's still shitty. Yeah, fuck it. Widowmaker, this item sets proc now drops a spore on the ground in front of you that explodes after one second instead of instantly dealing unavoidable damage. So, this here, here, this all this shit means... Uh, you still get to fuck people up, but only those who don't know the game or how these sets work. Anyone who know how to move, anyone who have fingers to press WASD, will just get out of them. That that means that. So I, I think that's something really nice. Armor of Truth, this item sets proc will now function correctly when you set an enemy off balance. Okay. Galerion's Revenge. I don't even know what this set does. Uh, does it uh, place a mine on the enemy when you light attack or something? What was it? Or was it the, when you interrupt they take more damage? Was it that one? I can't remember. Uh... Okay, the, it's just a fix in the name in that you can okay. Fixed an issue where this item set was not adding spell damage to restoration stat light and heavy attacks. Okay, so you get to kill people with resto heavy attacks now. Amazing. Ravager updated this item set's tooltip to indicate its proc cooldown. So Ravager has a cooldown. No one knew. Shroud of the Lich. Updated this item's tooltip to clearly indicate its proc cooldown. Proc condition. Okay. Is it like under 30% something? It, it was already clear. Okay, whatever. Um, Warlock. Updated this. I, okay, same shit. Infused. Fixed an issue where the infused weapon trade was under reducing the cooldown on oblivion damage enchantments so you put infused weapon torux pact with oblivion damage and you just keep light attacking people until they are dead so okay or 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 you combine it with night slayer torux pact and fuck people up even more how about that that will be better, right? Nice. That's that's actually nice. Okay. 
fucking oblivion builds. Everyone hates them for some reason. <laughs> Wonder why. Um, okay, our town animation. What's this? A ready check is no longer required for alliance war groups formed through the grouping tool. Okay. Audio crafting. Um. Okay. Alchemy rates require noon root less often. Thank you. And you have to craft poisons now. Fucking bullshit. I already keep the potions in my inventory. And now I have to keep poisons now. In addition to the potions. So my inventory is pretty much fucked now. <sighs> okay. I don't care, I don't care. Glyph of potion speed. Now reduce the cooldown on potions. Okay. Uh, fix the names of several furnishing plan. Okay, doesn't matter. Oh, you can use the vouchers you banked. From the bank, you don't have to get them. So that's something, I guess. Um, okay, okay, these are not very important things. Surveys, crown store, pass, sanctum, uh, the serpent. The Manti, while fighting Serpent, no longer disappear for no reason. Does it disappear, mysteriously? I... I didn't see that before. I, I'm hoping it's not talking about the explosion with the pink orbs. I hope it's not that. Because it's a mechanic boss is fucking killing the Manti. Okay. Treasure chest, uh, fuck it, fuck it, meh, heavy sex, okay, mementos, some stuff, okay, okay, um, quest and zones, UI, uh, okay, this was happening a lot of times to me, so thank you. Uh, okay, that's... Uh, okay, it says tutorial, so I'm, I guess it's over. Yeah. Um, okay, so the most important thing is Okay, we don't know the... Okay. The, if you are watching this video, you are probably here to hear my opinion on the next PvE tank. Uh, what I'm gonna be using, right? Uh, I don't think anyone else other than PvE tanks are watching my videos, whatever. Uh, so, here's the thing. Uh, the reason uh, we don't have a meta right now as PvE tanks is because it depends on group. If your group has penetration already, the, the Alkosh Torx Spike, they don't do shit. Uh, but if they need the penetration, you better use Torx Spike or Alkosh. But for example, in our group, we have enough penetration already, so I'm running with Ultigen build. Uh, this might be different for different groups, you know what I mean? So. It depends on your group, what your group needs. This is why there is no meta for tanks right now. So, uh, the my opinion is, we need to wait for people to find the PvE DPS meta first. I'm guessing people will start using precise weapons, except the stamina ones. Like, 
Okay, th this is my exception from the next patch. They'll be using uh, the Penetration Mundus with Twice Born Star and Shadow Mundus. And they'll be using... I'm sorry. I'm talking about Magicka DPS, by the way. As I said, Twice Born Star, uh, the Lower Mundus, Penetration Mundus, uh, the Shadow Mundus, and Critical uh, Precise Weapons. And maybe a Nirnhorn or Infused on Backbar. I don't know. For PvE Stamina, I'm guessing they'll be using... Uh, like, obviously, I'm not guessing. I know they'll be using Infused on Main Hand and Precise on Off uh, Offhand. I'm not sure about the Precise one, I'm, but I'm pretty sure about the Infused. Infused is very strong on Main Hand. So... Uh, I'm guessing the offhand weapon will be precise uh, and, the, and the bow bar will be either near horned or precise or something uh, I don't know, you get my point uh, so I think this is a very tight spot right now so it really depends uh, what what will be the meta? So we just have to wait and see. Uh, I'll personally go to PTS and try to get the best DPS with a uh, with some stamina character and try to get the best DPS with different combinations with the with the lower mundus and shadow with teeth like uh, with with teeth and lower lower with teeth like. Uh, like, you know what I mean. Uh, like, I know a lot of people will do the same. Uh, I'm really curious about the bleed damage, uh, bleed sets. Uh, but I know we can't test it because we don't have them. Uh, I'm guessing Twiceborn will be back because Mundus Storms are fucking so strong right now. Look at them. Just, just look. They're fucking amazing. Okay, uh, so I'm sorry if you come here to listen to my opinion about on the next PVE tank uh, meta. Um, as I said, we just need to wait and see what DPS is going with. If they don't achieve the maximum penetration, we will be going with Torx spec. This, this is that obvious. This fucking thing right here. I love it. This is fucking insane. This is just so good. This is amazing. The Torx Pact is so strong right now. But if only your group needs penetration. If they don't, there's absolutely no need. Okay. Um... Okay, that was, this is a very long video. I'm sorry uh, for making a video this long, but I just had to uh, read this and share my opinion. Like, I, I just looked at the first two pages and I, I'm really surprised about some things here, so uh, I tried to share my opinion with a little bit of terror crafting as well, like where the sets can be used, uh, how the uh, changes can be useful in some places. Um, so I don't know how it will work. We just wait and wait for people to find the highest DPS possible achievable and we're gonna support them in what they need that's how the next tanking meta will be decided we just wait and see um okay i really need to stop now thank you for watching i hope uh i know why i talked much but anyways uh, thank you for watching take care